I knew how to swim since age three, so I've just always been kind of fascinated with being in the water, and then that translated to this curiosity for, you know, what is in the water? And I just never really looked back. I was in the bookstore, just going through books. I found this book on underwater archeology span and I bought it and I read it that night. And I remember being excited about this book and I, and I thought, you know what, if this isn't a college bookstore, then maybe this is possible. We had a field season looking for shipwrecks that Christopher Columbus had lost. And we received a phone call, and they said, hey, we have this shipwreck. What do you think if this ship could possibly have belonged to Captain Kidd? And we said, well, that would be pretty cool. So we started looking into the historical records and, and archival information, and sure enough, what we found was he had abandoned a ship in 1699 prior to traveling to New England to try and clear his name of piracy. He had thought that he wasn't a pirate, and he actually had a privateering commission and had captured a ship that turned out to kind of be the international scandal of its, its time. This, this shipwreck was a pretty seminal event. I mean, we're looking at a ship that was abandoned by one of the most infamous pirates, if you will, in history. I mean, that's what archaeology rocks. It's you are physically interacting with the past, and the key is to find the story because that's what people are interested in. That's what I'm interested in the Henry Morgans and the Captain Kids, you know, how do we tell their story? What, what do we know? What can we find out about them that uh, we might not have before? There are muskets, there are cannons, there's a ship's stove, and we recovered, again, artifacts of a more personal nature, a spoon that someone might have used to eat their last meal, and the leather sole of a shoe that went down with some unfortunate soul during the shipwreck. It's those stories and the history that let us know who we are, where we came from. We all came from somewhere. Several years ago, uh, I, I went on a field season that ended up being about three months long. And I had this worry coming home that my then two-year-old son wouldn't recognize me. And making family work with the research, with the exploration, with the travel, is something that's become pretty key. So after that uh, three-month field season, we had to come up with some sort of a solution because I'd be going into the field again, and obviously the answer was, take your family with you. They love going and seeing new places, and they love the ocean, they love the water. My wife likes to think that they'll be surgeons and they can dive on the side, uh, but if you ask the boys, they'll have it otherwise. The field of underwater maritime archaeology uh, isn't large, and students often ask me, how, how do you make it possible? Uh, and, you know, my answer is, follow your passion. That's what I did, and I still get to do it as a father and as a husband and as a professional.